Now what is meter in signs? Let consider a chair and a desk. This chair has some mass and volume. I mean this chair occupies some space. So this chair has volume. Also it has some well known mass. Similarly, this desk has some mass and occupies some space. Hence it has some volume and it has some mass. According to this example, we can say that everything in the universe has some mass and volume. Either it is a chair or a desk or a car or a cell phone or a computer etc. They all have masses and volumes. Thus in science, we define matter as anything or any object occupying some space means having some volume and has some mass is known as a matter. This chair is a matter. If I ask you why, your answer is because it has some mass and has volume. This desk is also a matter. If I ask you why, your answer will be because it has some mass and has some volume. Therefore, remember that anything having volume and mass is known as a matter. Now what about states of matter? Well, there are three states of matter. Solid, liquid and gas. I will discuss all these three states of matter. Solid, liquid and gas. Firstly, let me teach you about solid. Usually, rigid objects are solids. For example, this curve. The first property of solid objects are that they have a definite shape. The shape of this cup is definite. Its shape doesn't change. Even if you carry it to the space, its shape would remain the same. Secondly, solids have definite volume. For instance, you can put specific amount of water a meter in this cup and its volume will also remain the same even if you carry it to the space or anywhere. Thirdly, the molecules or atoms of the solids are closely packed together and uniform where there is a strong force of attraction between the molecules of solid. If someone asks you why solids have definite shape and definite volume, your answer should be there is a strong force of attraction between the molecules or atoms of solid Due to this attractive force, solids get definite shape and definite volume. Fourthly, solids are incompressible. Again, if someone asks you that why solids are incompressible, your answer should be like this. The atoms or molecules of solids are closely packed together. There is no gap or empty space between the molecules of solids. Thus, you cannot compress these molecules of solid and that's why we say that solids are incompressible. Therefore, remember these four properties of solids. Solids have definite shape. Solids have definite volume. Molecules of solids are closely packed together and they are incompressible. Now, let me teach you the second state of matter a liquid. Usually liquids are flowing. For example, water, milk and honey. The first property of liquid is that they have indefinite shape. Let's consider one liter water in this beaker. The shape of water or liquid in this object is rectangular. Now if I put this water in the flask, its shape will be like trapezium. Similarly, if I put this water in this flat object, its shape will be like sphere or circular. Thus, from this example, we learn that the shape of liquid is changing. Therefore, we say that the liquid has indefinite shape. Secondly, liquid has definite volume. Although, the shape of liquid is changing while changing object for it. But the volume of liquid remains fixed or constant. 
For example, the volume of water in the beaker is 1 liter. When you put the liquid in this flask, again its volume is 1 liter. Similarly, the volume of water in this flat object is also 1 liter. Therefore, we say that liquids have definite volume and indefinite shape. Thirdly, the molecules of liquids are loosely packed together in non-uniform pattern. Molecules of liquids slide over each other. Here are two important questions which you should learn. The first question is that why liquids have indefinite shape but definite volume? The second question is that why liquids are mobile or why liquids flow? The answer of these both questions is same. The attraction force between the molecules of liquids is weak compared to solid. Due to this weak attraction force, molecules of liquid slide over each other. Hence, they flow or they are mobile. As a result, due to this sliding motion of molecules, liquids have indefinite shape. Fourthly, liquids are mobile. Fifthly, liquids are incompressible. Although the force of attraction between molecules of liquid is weak, but this force is enough to keep all the molecules of liquid together. As a result, there is no empty spaces or gaps between the molecules. No gaps or no empty spaces between the molecules means incompressibility. Hence, liquid are incompressible. Also, both the liquids and gases are known as a fluid because of their flowing property. Therefore, remember that the liquids have indefinite shape but definite volume. Liquid molecules are loosely packed together in non-uniform way. Liquids are mobile and liquids are incompressible. At last, let me teach you the third state of matter, a gas. Usually, gas is the invisible state of matter. For example, balloon filled with ammonia gas or the air surrounding us. The first property you should learn about gas is that gases have indefinite shape. Secondly, gases have also indefinite volume. For example, consider that suddenly this balloon bursts down. What happens to the ammonia gas in this balloon? Well, all the ammonia gas will escape from it and it will mix up with the air surrounding us. This both the ship and volume of ammonia gas changed. If you do not understand this example, let me give you one another example. Consider a closed cylinder with a movable piston. Let there are six molecules of gas in this closed cylinder. Remember that the gas molecules are free to move. Thus, thirdly, the force of attraction between gas molecules are very weak, or you can say negligible. Fourthly, gases are mobile, means they are freely moving. Fifthly, they are compressible. Now come to the main point. These six molecules of gas are freely moving within this cylinder. In this available space or in this available location. As I told you, that force of attraction between gas molecules are negligible. Hence, there is large gap or empty spaces between gas molecules. No. Today we'll be learning about changes in the states of matter. Now you know there are three states of matter. There are solids, there are liquids, and there are gases. And you probably know that when a solid like ice turns into a liquid, we say that it's melting. And if a liquid like water turns back into a solid, we can say that it's freezing. But it turns out their names for all of the other types of changes that can exist as well. If a liquid turns into a gas, like when you boil a pot of water, we say that the liquid is evaporating. This is an example of evaporation. There are also times when a gas will turn back into a liquid. 
If you've ever had a bottle of cold water, you see these little droplets of water form on the outside. This is happening because water vapor, or gas in the air, is turning back into a liquid because of the cold water inside of the bottle. We call this process, when a gas turns back into a liquid, condensation. There's one more example too. Believe it or not, but a solid can turn directly into a gas without ever having to be a liquid. This happens with dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide. If you drop it in some water just to start the reaction, you can see that the carbon dioxide ice is turning directly into a gas. It's never becoming a liquid. Those solid chunks are switching directly into a gas. Now this process where a solid goes straight to a gas is called sublimation. Let's practice some of these together. If you ever wake up on a cold morning, you sometimes see that there's liquid water on the grass. This water comes from water gas or vapor in the air that's turning back into liquid water. What is it called when a gas turns back into a liquid? Well, we can see that that is called condensation. Here's another example. If you pour water on a dark surface on a hot day, you can watch it seem to disappear really quickly. That's because the liquid water is turning into water gas or vapor and vanishing into the air. What is it called when a liquid turns into a gas? Well, you can see that we call that evaporation. Finally, here's one more. When you have a cube of dry ice, solid carbon dioxide, it turns straight from a solid into a gas. What is it called when a solid turns into a gas? Well, when a solid turns directly into a gas, it's called sublimation. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. On cold days, you sometimes see droplets of water form on your window. What is happening to cause that? Well, that's happening because water vapor or water gas in the air is turning back into a liquid on your window. That is an example of condensation. Now here's another. When you boil a pot of water, say to make tea, you can see all of this gas coming out of the kettle. What is this an example of? Well, in this example, liquid water is turning into water gas or water vapor as you boil it. This is an example of evaporation. So from today, remember, evaporation is when liquids turn into gases. Condensation is when gases turn into liquids. And sublimation is when solids turn directly into gases. Matter can be classified as a pure substance or a mixture. The simplest form of matter that could not be broken down further is known as element. Some examples of elements are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and basically everything that we can find in the periodic table of elements. When two or more elements combine, they form a compound. Let's take water for example. It has a chemical formula of H2O which means that it has hydrogen and oxygen atoms. Carbon dioxide or CO2 is also a combination of carbon and oxygen atoms. Table salt or NaCl is another example as it is a combination of sodium and chlorine. Both elements and compounds are classified under pure substances. Now, although both salt and water are pure substances, when they combine together, the product is no longer a pure substance. It now becomes a mixture. A mixture is a combination of two or more substances that can be further separated through physical means. Mixtures can be classified as homogeneous or heterogeneous. Homogeneous mixtures only have one observable phase. Being said, solutions are homogeneous mixtures because in it, the solute is completely dissolved in the solvent, leaving no trace of other states of matter in it. Going back to the salt and water example, when we dissolve salt in water, the salt particles completely incorporate with water as the particles become dissolved, which leave no trace of solid particles but completely liquid upon mixing. On the other hand, heterogeneous mixtures are the opposite. It is when substances combine but the phase is not uniform in the product. 
Mixing sand and water, for instance, does not make a totally uniform mixture since the sand particles can still be observed in water. Thus, it is a heterogeneous mixture. In this case, it is known as a suspension since particles get suspended at the bottom. However, there are some cases wherein the mixture shows uniformity on the outside, like blood. But microscopically, there are some particles that are not dissolved in the mixture. These are known as colloids. To recap all the things that we discussed in this lesson, please take a look at this flowchart.